Welcome to this video. Um, in this video, we're going to look at how we can create a multiple choice question, which we then use in a Google slide to assess whether learning has taken place. Now, um, one thing that is important to note is unlike using something like uh, quizzes or Google Forms or any other um, tool like that, the response will not be recorded. The whole point of this is to have um, to create a slide presentation which you can then send to learners, they can work through the content and then throughout the content you will add a number of questions. I wouldn't suggest using this to set up a quiz where you've got 10 or 20 questions for example, but if you've gone through a set of information and you just want to ask one or two questions just to determine whether or not they've understood what's going on, this is quite a useful job to do. So what I've done here is I've just set up a basic, um, a basic example of what a multiple choice question would look like simply inserting images here um, or drawing um, where I've, I've just drawn shapes and A, B or C and then I've got my four possible answers and I've asked my question. This can look whatever you want it to look like. So you can set this up, um, write it out in your slide presentation any way that you want to. It's quite nice to find a basic um, template or to, to set up a simple template for yourself which you can copy and paste. Now I suggest first setting all the questions and then adding the interactive element later. Um, the problem what's going to happen now is if we actually present this then regardless of where they're going to click they're going to end up going to the next slide and it won't tell them whether or not they've got anything right. So that is not what we want. Um, we want to have something happen based on the, on the click that they make. So in order to do this First, we need to essentially block them from clicking anywhere and just progress into the next slide. Um, so, in order to do that, there is no function built into slides that does it, but it's actually quite simple to do it. We're going to insert the shape and we're going to draw a rectangle over the entire slide. Right. So now, what this does is this becomes the top image. So, whatever happens they're going to be clicking on this image. Just to make things a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some transparency to this just so you see what's going on. Um, we're just going to give it this purple transparency. So what's happening is this block, as you can see, I've drawn it over everything else and that is now the top image. So what I need to do to ensure that they can't move on, and this is a little trick that they that, that has been built into Chrome, is the actual URL of the slide. So that's the web address right at the top. So all you do is you copy that. Now just to show you quickly what that is, um, I'm just going to create a little text box so that you see what I'm referring to. That long URL that you see over there, that is the URL, right? So we want to be able to use that URL. Now what's going to happen is this purple block that we have will turn it into a link. I'm going to change it and that links to this. What happens now is it effectively creates something that is essentially a dead link. So again, if we're going to present, just to show you, nothing happens now. So if they click on this, they don't go to the next slide, which is exactly what we want. Right, but they also, clicking on the correct slide doesn't take them anywhere either. Now in order to do that, we're going to continue adding little, um, adding these, these little blocks that we want to use. So let's create another shape and we'll draw this shape. We're going to draw it over the whole thing. So what's quite nice about that is that means they can click on the, on the A, B, C or D, but they can also click on the name and it's going to have the same effect. So just to help ourselves a little bit, we're going to color that in red. So now I know this one, if they click on this, this is the wrong answer. William Shakespeare is the correct answer in this instance. So that will mean it is the wrong answer. So we first need to create action blocks. What's going to happen if they click on something? So let's just quickly create two more slides, two additional slides. So we'll call this one. Sorry, that is the wrong answer. And we'll call this one. Well done, that is correct. Now you can obviously change this and make it look a little bit nicer than we've got over here. Because this is very plain and simple. Um, uh, what, what, what it looks like at the moment. 
And now all that we do is this little block, and I suggest doing this before you make copies of it. This one we also need to make a link. So again, we right click on it and we click on link. And now you'll see either I can paste a link as I did with the other one. Remember with a purple block, we pasted the link to the entire URL. Um, but alternatively, what also works quite nicely is we can select um, or we can go to go to a slide based on the based on the selection. So in this instance, we want to go to slide two. Sorry, that is the wrong answer. So once I've got that, now I simply go and I copy it and I paste it and I move it over to William Blake and then I move it over to William Shatner. So there we go, there we've got our three wrong answers and I can make another copy of this and over there we'll turn it green so now I know this is William Shakespeare. So I've got my all my, my answers that I need have been linked. This one obviously we want to change it so that it doesn't go to slide 2 but it actually goes to slide 3 and we apply and there we go. Now you don't actually need something like the well done that is correct if you don't want to. You can simply say if they click on the correct answer it moves on to the next either question or to the next um, to the next bit of the information they can look at. So just to show you what this will actually look like now present if I click on William Wordsworth, I go to the wrong one. If I click on William Shakespeare, well done, that is correct. Right, now just to note quickly, when I move around with my arrow keys, I can't turn off the navigation completely. So the same thing is going to happen on a mobile device. They can still swipe and they'll still be able to move to the next slide. Um, again, this is self-directed learning. It is for their own benefit. It's not the questions have not been put in for the benefit of the teacher to know what they've answered because you won't be able to track their answers. But this is, works very well if a learner is actually um, asking, if, if, if a learner has gone through work, gets to get, get a question, see if they understood it, and then move on to the next bit of a presentation. Now, obviously, we don't want it to look like this because um, it's pretty obvious anyone's going to open this up, which is the correct answer. So once I've actually added all my transparent blocks um, or added all these blocks, now we just need to select all of them. So you can either click and drag and it automatically selects it or often what, what actually works a little bit better because then you're going to select a whole bunch of other things as well. Click on the purple block and then hold the control key on your keyboard and then click on all the other blocks. Once you've selected everything, go to the full color and then you just say transparent. Just make sure there's no border either. And there we go. And it'll work exactly the same. My blocks are still there. Everything has been added. Now, to make your life a little bit easier, what I've done, and I'm going to share the link to, to the template um, in the, the, the description below this. Um, I've actually created this little template for you. So what you can do, um, once, you've got, once, once you go into the slide, that'll show you the template. Here I've got the blocks. Now I'm going to show you how we actually use that. So I just select everything. The, the key to select, you can either click and drag, and it'll select everything, or you can press Control A, and it selects everything on the screen. And then you say Control C. And it copies that or right click and say copy and then go to a question so this is the one that we did I'm just gonna to go to slide 4 this is another example and now I just paste it and there's all the links have already been inserted for you the only thing that you need to change now is you need to move these around so obviously we'll click and we'll move the green one to William Shakespeare and you need to make sure that you change this, remove this link and change it to the slide in your presentation that you want to move it to because that won't work. These have all been set to move to the next slide. So what you can also do in that template is I've added this slide itself. So if you click on the slide, don't select anything here, click on the slide, control C to copy it and then you click on this one and then you just paste it by you can, if you want to paste it there, you can right click on the slide and say paste. Um, and you'll see it's adding, it has added the slide. So now again, we go and reset the transparencies to, uh, we reset the transparency to transparent. We select these and we change it to transparent. And then if we present, you'll see We've got our block that's not going to allow us, it doesn't go anywhere, but if I click on William Wordsworth, it tells me I'm wrong, I can click on try again, 
and we'll try again. William Shakespeare will take me, well, I've removed the link now, but if I click on William Shakespeare, that's the correct link. It'll take me to the right. Now, just to show you what you can also do, of course, is it doesn't have to be multiple choice text based. So again, I'll copy the template. I can just paste the template over here. Um, sorry, let me just copy the template. just go here and then paste the template and now the only difference is I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time resizing these and changing it to the correct shape so that I'm gonna change that we'll move that red block to the fish this one will leave on the cat and this one will move to the cow there we go and the green block We'll move to the dog. I always like to add a slight transparency to these blocks because now I, it's easier for me to see where what is happening and once I've actually finished with everything then I can go and just select all the blocks that I want to use and I can change it to being transparent and the main one as well transparent and then it'll work. Um, so now let's just quickly see what's going to happen here. Click on the fish We'll say try again, if we click on the dog, it goes to, well done, you got that one correct. Right, so this one I haven't removed the transparencies yet. Right, I hope that helps. It is a, it's just a, a useful little trick that you can use in these, um, using these templates that we've created for you is going to make your job a lot easier.